I will never forget this room. This is it, yeah. It took a year. It wasn't easy. I finally got permission to go inside and climb the stairs toward 210, the so-called female violent ward, where I was placed when I was 17 years old. Everybody has a moment in their life that they may not want to return to, but a moment that they need to return to. This is mine. This was a crazy place, and not just because of the people they locked up. It was a very crazy place. This 17-year-old single female, her first admission to a state institution has a long history of... 50 cycle. points. It's over. I'm yours, Gabe. Have you ever made love to vampire? Time to pay the bet, Natasha. <gasps> this one's for Bobby. Ah! Check the obituaries. The what? Shotgun. <laughs> Mark, she's rich. Rich? Oh, it's too good to be true. Oh, this is your house? Yep. Cynthia, are you as rich as we think you are? Oh, I sure hope so. Daddy's never been very flashy back. He's very old school and all, you know. She's rich. Fabulous.
I should have known this was going to happen from the first time I saw you take off your hood. My hood? And my cap. It was the first time I saw your eyes. There's something you should know about me first. There's a part of my life that I'm not so proud of. Not so long ago, they used to call me Rough Nick. The first weeks of the war we called Desert Storm had been a testing ground for the U.S. military's latest technology. Computer-guided cruise missiles and laser-guided smart bombs hit their targets with stunning precision and lethality. F-117 stealth bombers, virtually invisible to Iraqi radars, made their battlefield debut a smashing success. Since the disappointment of Vietnam, the U.S. military had been investing in high-tech weapons it believed would win the next big war. The goal was to fight from afar without risking American lives on bloody ground combat. The evening news made the war look like a video game. And we were pressing all the buttons. The months following Christine's stroke were grim indeed. I desperately wanted to get up, take action, do something productive or meaningful but I couldn't move. I felt paralyzed. Winter came, then spring, then summer, and with it, inspiration. We would go back to Provincetown and meet Christine for the 10th anniversary of Golden Threads. We'd be on the road again. Who decides who lives? 
Every day after a transplant is going to be a gift. He may, in fact, die while waiting on the waiting list. And who decides who dies? The patient is asking me to do something illegal. I want to be able to have the right, you know, to end my life. Eve stood underneath the tree of knowledge. Its luscious fruit was forbidden by God. But the serpent urged her on. Eat, then your eyes shall be opened and you shall be like God. Eve didn't know who to believe, the serpent or God. Finally, she went ahead and she took a bite. For centuries, Eve has been known for disobeying God and corrupting her husband, Adam. But some say there is much more to her story. That the first woman on earth was intrepid and curious. She willingly traded the security of paradise for a taste of real life. When she and Adam were expelled from paradise, it was Eve who led the struggle for survival in the harsh desert plains. As she raised a family of her own, Eve became a loving mother with the strength to overcome heartbreak and poverty. Eve, the first adolescent to break the rules, the first woman to desire a husband, the first mother to love and to lose a child. <laughs>